In today's video, we're going to touch on some trade talk around the Pittsburgh Penguins, philosophy of other rumors regarding potential expansion or relocation, some different places that might actually be in the running for an NHL team down the road in the future, plus we have some more prospect signings as well, and some other news including Jonathan Taves, Hockey Canada, and other stuff around the league as well, including the PA. We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a ton of NHL news to discuss today. Some trade talk around the Penguins. Uh, let's get started first up with news from the NHL waiver wire. We have news of the Avalanche today have placed defenseman Bradley Hunt on the waivers. Of course, Hunt has been up and down with the team between NHL and AHL this year. It's pretty much the story of his career. He's a depth defenseman that seems to find ways to kind of you know be like a you know five six seven guy goes up and down. Uh, obviously, this must indicate that the Avalanche are getting healthier in the back end, so he'll uh, be reassigned to the minors should he clear. And I would suspect, given that we're past the trade deadline and all that, that most likely he will clear and be assigned to the American Hockey League. Uh, with last night's NHL action, the Boston Bruins uh, picked up another victory and clinched the President's Trophy. Uh, so they're now officially the top team in the NHL for the regular season. Uh, they'll have home ice advantage all the way through the playoffs, of course. Uh, we also seen the Eastern Conference wildcard race continue to be a battle. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, are holding down that final spot. Uh, and teams like Florida and Ottawa and Buffalo are all chasing them. Last night, the Penguins picked up a much-needed victory. Uh, and, of course, the Panthers beat Montreal and the Senators beat Philadelphia. So everybody kind of kept pace last night. Um, so we'll see this is continuing to heat up as well. The Western Conference wildcard race is uh, interesting as well with uh, teams trying to catch the Winnipeg Jets, like the Calgary Flames and Nashville Predators. So uh, the Flames are probably in the best position to have a shot at knocking off the Jets, but we'll have to wait and see how things play out. But at least things are interesting right now down the stretch here. Uh, obviously, we're going to see uh, tonight as well in Buffalo, we're going to have a uh, young goaltender, Devin Levi. who was a big prospect uh, college signing of the Sabres making his NHL debut. So uh, the Sabres are going to be without Tate Thompson yet again and have our rookie goaltender, Devin Levi, making his Debut against the Rangers in a critical game for the Sabres to keep their playoff hopes alive. Uh, we have a number of signings today as well. Uh, start with Vancouver. They've signed a prospect goaltender who's undrafted from Belarus. Uh, six foot six, two 230 pounds, so he's a huge guy. Uh, Nikita Talopilo uh, gets a two-year entry-level contract, so uh, it's a pretty good find for the Canucks. My limited knowledge of the player certainly seems like a, a decent goalie prospect, so... Obviously got a huge size and somebody that the Canucks feel are worth taking a chance on here. The New York Islanders have signed a pair of college defensemen. They've signed uh, Aiden Fulp, who's a 23 right shot defenseman from Western Michigan University. And they've also signed Travis Mitchell, who's a left shot defenseman from Cornell University. Both 23 years of age. Both seem to have pretty solid college careers uh, defensively. Both get two-year contracts. So um, a couple of solid defensive prospects to add. To the Islanders system. Now, the New Jersey Devils have also signed a 19 year old left wing prospect, Josh Philbin, who was a 2022 sixth round pick from the Western Hockey League's Swift Curve Broncos. So he officially gets his three year entry level contract officially on the books. Now, last night's action as well, we saw a few more uh, injuries, and uh, we have a word on Vancouver too. Uh, the Senators ended up having, like I said, a costly victory over the Philadelphia Flyers as they kept pace with the Panthers and the Penguins in the wildcard race, but unfortunately lost another defenseman. Veteran uh, D-man Travis Hamannick went down with what appeared to be a knee injury. Pretty routine hit along the boards. I'm not sure exactly you know, what happened, but uh, I believe it was uh, Nick Sealers, the one who hit a lot along uh, on the boards there in the defensive zone, and I'm not sure if they just the way they collided. It seemed like a, it's a bad leg injury. No word on exactly what it is, but the Senators are saying he's going to be out for a while, so... More than likely, his season's over. That's the third regular defenseman now. Um, between him, Shabbat, and Jacob Chikorin, all out for multiple weeks, which is likely going to spend, uh, you know, potentially for all three at least. That's hard to say. If I don't think Hamannick will be back this year, but uh, I guess with Shabbat and Chikorin, there's a possibility. And if they were to make the playoffs, they likely would be good for round one should they do that. But, of course, that's going to be an uphill battle. The more gruesome injury of the night, though, did... Uh, unfortunately happened to Derek Broussard in Ottawa. Um, it was actually on a scoring play, uh, which have Matthew Joseph and Shane Pinto playing on a line with Broussard. And uh, that Pinto had put the puck on the net. 
And after, uh, as he started to celebrate, unfortunately, Broussard went down awkwardly beside the net. Looks like he just kind of lost the net, your toe pecked or something. And when he fell, his leg buckled underneath him. And your leg's not supposed to bend that way. And you can tell he ended up on his back holding his leg and was basically almost in shock, couldn't move. You could tell he was in immense pain with a closure over top of him, signaling for the trainers to come. It was the, the building went from cheering for a goal to being dead silent almost instantly. Uh, that game last night between Ottawa and Philly was a pretty, um, I don't know, hard to describe. It was turning into a bloodbath there slowly. There was lots of fights, lots of rough stops and injuries. So it kind of settled things down in a sense, not that you want to see that kind of stuff happen and be the reason for the game to kind of change a little bit. But ultimately, uh, Broussard, you know, I'm guessing it's probably a broken ankle um, or something like he could put absolutely no weight on that at all. His teammates helped him up and basically on one leg helped him uh, carry him off the ice and down the tunnel. And I think it's fair to say his season's over. But for someone who came in as a veteran guy on a PTO in camp, scored 13 goals this year. Um, without playing every single game on top of that, uh, being a good pro, good veteran, good leader around the room, off the ice as well. I think that contract more than served his purpose, and hopefully for his sake that it doesn't end his, his career and he can come back and kind of you know finish up on his own terms. But it was a gruesome looking injury, and um, yeah, I don't know the full extent of it, but did not look good. It was pretty gruesome. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks also said today, head coach Rick Talk confirmed that the newly acquired defensive of Philip Peronic who they got from Detroit, is going to be shut down for the rest of the season. He is battling a shoulder injury, and his talk had said it just doesn't make sense for him to try to play through it when it's, you know, they're basically, you know, playoff hopes are over with, and there's no point in him trying to play through it. He said if it were a playoff game, he probably would try it. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for him to do that, so they're going to shut him down, and, uh, you know, he did get a few games in uh, to kind of get used to his teammates and so they can see a little bit more from him up close and personal. But otherwise, yeah, he'll resume next year. Uh, it was announced today as well that there's going to be a joint venture between the NHL, the NHLPA, and the NHL Alumni Association. They're making a joint donation of $100,000 to the Boreas Solving ALS Foundation as well, which is a very nice gesture. Of course, Solving recently passed away from complications from ALS. Also at the Sens game last night, it was uh, spotted... A few other NHL executives and former coach, uh, Doug Armstrong, who's obviously the GM for the St. Louis Blues, but also the GM for Team Canada coming up, um, was spotted with Claude Julian. So I do wonder if perhaps uh, Julian might be um, in line to be the head coach for the World Championships. Maybe him and Doug Armstrong were discussing uh, players. So obviously, they're going to be obviously inviting players on teams that are not in the playoffs, and right now we know the Flyers won't be. The Senators are unlikely to be, so there could be some players from those teams that could possibly be invited. So I wonder if that's kind of the purpose of their visit last night. Of course, there's lots of other people in the building as well, including Ryan Reynolds as well, giving tons of attention last night. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks have confirmed as well that Jonathan Taves is going to be able to make a comeback, and he's actually going to play tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, so he will get at least some NHL games in before the end of the NHL regular season. I know he was been coming back to practice recently. He was hoping to be able to get back. Uh, he was interviewed and asked about retirement again, and he said he's trying not to let himself go there just yet. It's still too early. Uh, for right now, he's just focusing on trying to finish out the season and trying to get back and at least play some of these games. So uh, that's good to see. Obviously, it's a you know good forward progress. Hopefully, he does well and hopefully he can get through these games. And uh, if, uh, this, if this is it, then at least he can hopefully go out on his own accord here. But uh, the good positive news in the case of Jonathan Taves trying to make his comeback. Now, we also saw uh, actually another signing that I didn't include earlier with the signings as well. Uh, this signing came a little bit later this afternoon when the Montreal Canadiens have announced that they've signed uh, a Czech prospect as well from the 2020 draft, Jacob Dobbs, uh, who's against a two-year ELC. He's a 21-year-old goalie so that contract's going to kick in next season and for the remainder of this year he signed an american hockey league contract to be able to go down and join the laval rocket at the ahl level so we'll see how that prospect goalie makes out see what kind of actually you get into and there was actually a trade today as well uh, involving some prospects the pittsburgh penguins have traded prospect judd caulfield who was an unsigned prospect because he was playing u.s college hockey and then i've seen rumors uh, recently 
speculated that the Penguins were not going to be able to sign Caulfield, that he wasn't interested in signing it for whatever reason. I don't know why. They've traded him now to the Anaheim Ducks for prospect Timo uh, Nickel. Now, uh, Caulfield was a 2019 fifth rounder originally, and like I said, he was, wasn't expecting to sign in Pittsburgh, so they were able to flip him to another team um, and get an asset in return. So that's good for them in that regard, but uh, we'll see how uh, Caulfield will do in Anaheim if he will sign with them. Certainly they have a lot of young players going through a rebuild, so uh, it might be a good landing spot for him to kickstart his NHL career. Now, some other information that came out today through the 32 Thoughts podcast uh, with Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick, and I did post a video separately on this topic, so if you want a more in-depth analysis and details on this, I'll certainly link it up in the YouTube cards and go check it out. Um, but they mentioned uh, that uh, Gary Batman had made uh, a recent meeting in New York City with another interesting billionaire who happens to be an owner of an NHL franchise, which is the Utah Jazz. He also co-owns an MLS soccer team in the state of Utah with David Blitzer, who was also a co-owner of the New Jersey Devils. So certainly he already has you know some connections in the NHL world. Friedman made mention that the billionaire Ryan Smith has been linked to the NHL before him, and they believe there is some interest to him someday maybe owning an NHL franchise. They discussed basically the possibility of a team relocating. Um, that, For example, they use the Coyotes who are trying to get the, the arena deal in Tempe, and they're going to be going through a referendum there if things didn't work out. For example, could Salt Lake City maybe be a landing spot? Because apparently they're leading contenders for the 2030 Olympics. So they're going to be building some new arenas and things there to likely get ready for those games. So there's a connection there. Or could he be more interested in maybe an expansion franchise and maybe between Salt Lake City or more likely where he's actually originally from, which is in Oregon. I know it's believed that Portland might be a, a, you know, a future landing spot for an NHL franchise as well. I know Jeff Barrick made mention that some people were convinced when the Seattle Kraken were first being announced as a franchise that there was some that thought that maybe they should go to Portland first. The market there might be better than Seattle, but also, you know, being close proximity could create another team in that, you know, Northwestern uh, part of North America here, which could certainly, uh, you know, have a, you know, an interesting rivalry between the Seattle team or the Canucks, etc. So, um, hard to say what will come from that, if anything, but there's certainly lots of speculation when it comes to you know, future expansion or if a team needed to move and any of those rumors, which is not something you really like comes up very often. So if that's something that interests you, click on the YouTube card when you're done watching this video and you can check out the full unanalyzed details of that one as well. Now, I want to talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins a little bit, uh, when it comes to some trade rumors and some trade talk. Now, um, Penguins media member, uh, Dan Kurjinski. Uh, who runs Pittsburgh Hockey Now and also the National Hockey Now uh, brand as well, um, has some recent articles out talking about how he feels the Pittsburgh Penguins should be going through a pretty drastic retool this offseason. He also feels that GM Ron Hextall should be very much on the hot seat and that it wouldn't be completely outrageous to think a change in general manager might be something that's a uh, you know, high priority this offseason, given the fact of the lack of activity, you could say, around the NHL trade deadline and the inability to address a few of the team's needs, really, you know, it's quite possible uh, that if the team misses the playoffs, which they are in great danger of, um, that, you know, a guy like Hextall could be in jeopardy to lose his job. It wouldn't be shocking. And one thing that is favorable, though, to Pittsburgh is that they certainly do have a better schedule than some of the teams that are chasing them down right now to try to secure that playoff spot. So we'll have to wait and see where things go. But even if they do hang on and make the playoffs, they're likely going to have to play the Boston Bruins in the first round. And it's quite possible that they could go out early in a quick sweep or short series. And if that were to happen, is that really a whole lot better than missing the playoffs completely? You have to think that it probably isn't and that changes are likely going to be coming in Pittsburgh. They know that they committed a lot of money. Uh, to retain Malkin and Latane, they still have Crosby for a few more years under the current contract, and that they're certainly trying to be in win now mode. But gold hunting has been an issue, defense has been an issue, and you have to think that changes are likely coming because I just don't see this group getting a whole lot accomplished this year. Uh, he goes on to say that he feels the team itself should be, uh, you know, uh, basically looking at a major retool this offseason. And even players like Jake Gensel, Brian Rust, uh, for example, uh, Jeff Petrie should not feel safe and comfortable that they should be considered moving any or all of those players in exchange to change things up and get a different dynamic in the year to play with Crosby, Malcolm, Tang, etc. 
I mean, obviously they have other players in that mix as well, like Zucker and Raquel. Um, you know, obviously maybe they're, you know, maybe he feels they're more likely to stay. I'm not sure, but basically that uh, there's a good chance we're going to see some changes, a bit of an upheaval here. And, you know, I have to think, though, if they're going to change the GM, they're going to have to do it early in the offseason so that they can get the new person in place long before, uh, you know, the draft and free agency, all that important part of the offseason really kicks in. I mean, um, you know, would they move Brian Burke out of his president role? Would they have Burke take over the GM role? I don't know what they would do in that regard if they decided that Hextall wasn't doing a satisfactory job here. But uh, I do agree with the, the article to some extent that there's certainly work to be done in Pittsburgh. I don't think they're really championship caliber team or anything close to it. And certainly this, uh, you know, bunch of group of players and Crosby, Malcolm, and Tang, obviously still playing relatively well. Certainly want to have a chance on the championship. And I don't think that they have the supporting surrounding cast right now to really get that done. And I was going to start between the pipes and work its way out to see what they can actually do. But it wouldn't be shocking at all based on the, the author's uh, you know, opinion here in the article, what I've seen and heard from other NHL insiders, that we do see some pretty significant change in Pittsburgh this offseason. But let me know your thoughts. How deep of a retool do you think this team needs? Which players do you think they should swap out? And what kind of dynamics should they be going for for next year to have a better chance to finish higher in the playoffs with a more secure spot? And see if this uh, you know, 300 monster can still possibly contend for a championship. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments. And we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time.